This is the first of a set of two lectures concerning a classical explanation of two particular features. One is that the electron is a clock. It has an internal periodic motion and this internal motion is the motion of the center of charge around the center of mass. So we are going to use a previous experiment to determine what is the frequency of this electron clock. The other talk will be devoted to the spin of the proton. The proton is a bound system of three quarks, but nevertheless the addition of the three spins of the quarks do not give rise to the spin of the proton. This is called proton spin crisis. We shall analyze, even from the classical point of view, that uh, there is a problem with the addition of the angular momentum of the quarks to obtain the, the proton spin. Now, in the first lecture, our model of electron at rest, at rest means that the center of mass is at rest, what we have here is a center of mass and a center of charge. These are the main features of this spinning electron. But the center of charge is moving around the center of mass in circles in the center of mass frame at the speed c. So from this observer point of view, this object rotates and therefore it has a spin. And in fact, the, the spin contains two parts. One related to the orbital part of the center of charge, we call Z, is perpendicular to that plane, and another related to a commoving Cartesian frame attached to the center of charge, which is rotating with angular velocity omega, so there is another part, W, pointing along the omega. So the total spin S is the addition of these two vectors. When quantizing this model, it satisfies the Dirac's equation, and in fact, this spin is half the angular part set. Now, the, the main features of this model are these. When quantizing the spin, classically the spin can take any value, but when quantizing the spin is one half, the radius is half Compton's weight length, the frequency is that frequency 2.5 to 10 to the 20 turns per second, this is the frequency we, we are going to determine experimentally, the period, the inverse of the frequency. And in that model, you see, we have a charge moving around. So associated to, the, to this current that is a magnetic moment related to the orbital part by the usual relation. But because when quantizing the system, the orbital part is twice as much in the spin part, is why when expressing the magnetic moment in terms of the total spin, we get this two here, which is called the zero magnetic ratio. So it is not strange that all these features are obtained when quantizing the model, and in fact this model satisfies the Dirac equation. Dirac in 1920, he obtained that the electron had a spin or half that moves with velocity c, oscillates in an area twice as much as this radius with that frequency and period and has a zero magnetic ratio g equals to for the magnetic moment. Now if we look at this electron from an arbitrary inertial observer, the free motion will be this. Here we have the, in red the center of mass motion, in blue the center of charge. The, the main feature of this is that the center of mass velocity is always below C, but the center of charge velocity is always C. The center of charge is always moving at that unreachable velocity for every inertial observer. But what we see here is a, is a geometric pattern. We have a natural length of this object, so the electron has this internal motion and therefore it is a clock. But that clock, when the electron moves, takes more time to give a turn than when the electron is at rest. 
In fact, if T0 is the period for the center of mass frame, in this frame, which is where the electron is moving with velocity v, the time it takes to give a turn is gamma of v t0. Gamma of v is the relativistic factor. So, it takes more time to give a turn, so using the electron as a clock, this time is going slower. If you see to another inertial observer, all the electrons associated to that observer are moving with respect to, to us with a velocity b, so we see that if they take that those electrons for measuring time, their time measurement will be less than our time measurements. Time measurement is a relative a phenomenon relative to every inertial observer. So the, the time it takes to give a turn here, this length at the speed c, takes more time when the center of charge is making the circle in the center of mass frame. That's the idea. So, you see, this is the period at the center of mass frame, but when the center of mass moves, the time it takes is this one. So the, the center of mass has a displacement lambda, velocity times this time, so every lambda, the shape of that longitudinal period is remarkable, because we see that feature all around whenever the electron moves. Let us take uh, some calculation with this lambda, lambda vt, we put it by v, this expression, multiply and divide by m, this expression, but here, gamma of v and v is the linear momentum of the electron. So, in, in this relation, simple relation, what we see is that the longitudinal periodicity, the spatial periodicity of the motion of the center of charge electron is proportional to the linear momentum. Nu d is our frequency, the Dirac's frequency we are going to to measure with this experiment. So, we have that this periodicity is proportional to the linear momentum. Now, let us consider different motions of the same electron is sent into the set axis with the same velocity, 0.3 seat, with different spin orientations. This picture represents the, the, the projection on the x zeta plane of the center of charge motion, the blue one, and center of mass motion of six electrons with different spin orientations. The spatial periodicity is the same in all these motions. This lambda is the same because this lambda only depends on the velocity of the center of mass. And all of them have the same velocity. But it is important that when we try to interact with this object, the point we are going to determine the external force is the position of the charge. So the, the position of the charge is making this motion, so if we have some external field, we have to evaluate that external field at the charge position. Now we have this longitudinal periodicity, and we are going to confront this periodicity with a well-known periodicity, with the lattice of a crystal. So, we have a crystal, this is going to be a silicon crystal, the separation between the center of mass of the atoms is d, is d, and here we have that lattice, and on the right hand side we have two of the above uh, motions of the electron of the same lambda, with two different spin orientations. This is the spin along offset axis, and here is the spin in the orthogonal direction to the set axis. Now, the, if we send these electrons into this crystal, the interaction of these atoms is determined in terms of the charge position. But we are going to confront this periodicity with this periodicity. For instance, if d is proportional to lambda, for instance, 
with k equals 1, d equals lambda. So the interaction of this electron with every unit cell will be always the same. In that case, the total force produced by the atoms to the electron will be the same in every cell, in every unit cell. So for that particular lambda, which means for that particular linear momentum, P is equal to m nu d d over k, with k equals to 1, we have one lambda into every unit cell that will be a transfer of linear momentum in the same direction in all the cells. Here we are going for the silico, this distance is 3.84 Armstrong. This lambda c, this transversal motion of the center of charge is at a different scale because this is Compton's wavelength which is twice as much as the internal radius, is 10 to the 13 meters. So this, this, this length is at the scale 1,000 times the other scale. But nevertheless, the way this electron progress in between will produce some linear momentum transfer. For k equals 1, 2, 3, and 4, the linear momentum we have to send the beam of electrons, in order that d will be a multiple of lambda, are these four. And this is a quite high energy, because, for instance, for p equals 2, with 80.8 MeV, this represents that the electron is moving almost at the speed of light, at this, this velocity. Now, this is the idea. Because, for instance, if d is equals to lambda, there will be a resonance scattering process. Because in every unit cell will transfer some amount of transversal linear momentum delta. But if it has to, to cross through n unit cells, the total linear momentum transfer will be in the same direction. Total n lambda. So at the end of the crystal, the trajectory of that electron will be deviated an angle alpha. Of course, if the linear momentum is half, which is another possibility, in that case, two longitudinal periodicities of the electron are inside every unit cell, the linear momentum transfer will be approximately the same, but the angle, the deflection angle, will be greater. If d is not a submultiple of lambda, so there is no a, a numerical relationship between d and lambda in every unit cell the momentum transfer some places will be to the right to the left up and down so in general if there is no that <coughs> relationship the average transfer will be almost zero and the electron beam will not be uh, deviated from the main direction so, what we have is to measure at what values of p we see in the screen, on the detector, a decrease in the arrival of the, of the electrons. Now, we are inspired in this paper by this group, we shall call them the Saclay group, by using the Saclay linear accelerator, they publish this paper in 2005 and was re-edited in Foundations of Physics in 2008 with some additional numerical computation. The, the experiment, they take this idea by De Broglie. De Broglie, in his thesis, postulates the following. I translate this idea. The translation means According to De Broglie, we admit in this world the existence of a periodic phenomenon of unknown nature which will be linked to every amount of isolated energy and related to its proper mass by Planck-Einstein's equation. That is, an electron at rest 
has an energy mc square and according to de Broglie it has a periodic motion of frequency nu v so that Planck's constant nu v will be the energy of the electron at rest. It is the same idea that photons have a periodic internal motion such that its energy is Planck's constant times its frequency. So they try to determine this de Broglie, de Broglie frequency, but we see that this frequency is half Dirac's frequency, half the frequency of our classical model of electron. But what we want to do is to find that the internal frequency of the center of charge around the center of mass, this unknown periodic motion for the Broglie, is the motion of the center of charge around the center of charge of mass has this internal frequency. Now, the device is this. It had an injection of electrons with the linear accelerator, sp1, sp2 at magnet, bending magnets to collimate the beam, which goes through the crystal. This is a silicon crystal of one micrometer of thickness. Finally, this is the last bending magnet, and they go to the detectors. The detector window is three times three millimeters. It is at three meters of the crystal, so three millimeters at three meters is one thousandth of a radian, the angle of the electron beam to be detected. If the deviation of the electron is larger than one thousandth of a radian, they will not reach the detector, so the number of electrons for some particular linear momentum, linear momentum, they, they will decrease the arrival to the detector. This is what we expect if the frequency of the electron is the Dirac's frequency of our model on the lower part, this is what we expect if the frequency of the electron is the Broglie model. What is this? Here we have the linear momentum of the electron, and here on y-axis we have the number of electrons <coughs> that reach the detector. For a certain linear momentum, the number of electrons is on average the same value, but for some particular linear momenta, which are related to this internal frequency by this relation. For instance, in the Dirac model, the first one will be a 161.7 MeV. There will be a pit in the arrival of electrons to the detector. Because there is a resonant scattering, because lambda, the longitudinal frequency, uh, longitudinal period of, of the center of charge is equal to the separation of the atoms. With k equals 2, they will be this, 3, 4, and 5, etc. But the Sackley group try to determine the Broglie model. In the Broglie model, the first peak will be at 80.8 MeV. So they decided to, to establish this range for the energy of the linear accelerator to determine this speed. Of course, if they give twice as much this energy, they will also obtain this speed. But there is a difference between these two figures, because if the frequency is the last frequency, with k equals 3, this speed will be obtained. The 4 will also be obtained here as the half of this frequency, but the odd ratios 3, 5, 7, and so on, will not appear if the frequency is the Broglie's frequency. So, that's the idea. We have to enlarge, in this experiment, this, reach, this region to determine whether these 3, 5, 7 peaks appear or not. Because if they appear, they cannot appear in here, so the internal frequency of the electron will be the X frequency. 
This is the experimental result they obtain in the range 80.06 to 81.6. They, tr they are trying to determine the pit here. And the result they obtain are these dots. These dots are the experimental results. This is the counts. The number of electrons arriving to the detector, the order of 3.10 to the fourth. But they found that the pit is not exactly at 80.8, but at 81.1. We, we, we shall discuss what is possible the reason of this difference between the real value of the pit and the expected pit. But they also make a numerical integration by assuming that the atoms interact with the electrons through a parabolic potential. They make the calculation by assuming that the frequency is the Broglie frequency and the result will be this. However, they repeat the Monte Carlo analysis by assuming that the frequency is twice as much the Broglie frequency, that is, Dirac's frequency. And in that case, they obtain this curve, which is almost covers the experimental curve, except for this gap, for this displacement of the pit. Now, they claim that the natural frequency is more likely to be Dirac's frequency than the Broglie frequency. Well, the main conclusion is that probably this difference in the location of the pits could be related, for instance, to the temperature of the crystal. In no part of the experiment is mentioned the temperature of the sample, but because if you increase temperature, the length L will be bigger and, and therefore bigger the linear momentum for this resonant scattering. Also, it is not known what is the shape of the velocity distribution of the electrons in the beam. According to some average linear momentum, some electrons will be above, another below. So, on the average, some of the electrons are deflected, but this small difference is less than 0.5% will be related to these uh, things. But in their experiment, they try to determine the pit at 80.8. .8. So that's why they decided to, to explore the range in between, between 54 to 110 MeV. So we have to enlarge to the lower part of the momenta to determine whether the odd integer peaks corresponding to 3, 5, 7 and so on of the Dirac frequency will appear by enlarging to the lower part of the spectrum the analysis of this scattering process. We have tentatively written the lower peaks with uh, a deeper because uh, the electrons stay more time inside the crystal and therefore the time it takes to deviate will be larger. If this experiment is successful, this will allow us to establish a natural unit of time, of local time, for processes involving elementary particles. So for that, those processes, this natural unit of time is the natural timing for analyzing electron-electron interaction. And finally, this experiment will clarify whether the internal frequency is that uh, the release frequency of some unknown nature, or it is the Dirac's frequency which corresponds to the motion of the center of charge around the center of mass. This is the frequency we try to determine. This work has been published in this paper, and people interested can also get the lecture notes of a course I lecture at the University of Country, or you can contact me.
calculations I've been performing with Mathematica and Dynamic Solver. And the next lecture will be the spin of the proton. Another lectures with a classical explanation are those that you can get in touch with them to analyze another classical features of the electron concerning this uh, natural model of electron. Thank you for your attention.